one. Hey everybody, it is Wayne with Ugly Mug Marketing. And today I've got another very special guest with us. Uh, today we've got our very own Jessica Cole. Jessica, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks Wayne, I'm excited to uh, be able to get to do this with you. So let's jump straight in, Jessica. What is your story? What's Jessica's story? Oh, goodness. Um, so I was originally born in South Jersey. Um, my whole family was from there. And then slowly, we all kind of migrated to Louisiana, um, graduated from Alexandria Senior High School, went to Louisiana Tech University. Um, I was one of those kids that was like, I'm getting out of the South, I'm getting out of Louisiana. And I moved to Texas for a year. And then I moved to um, the outskirts of Philadelphia for two years. And came home because I missed uh, missed all my friends and family. And uh, a week from coming back, I met my husband. And so we've been together since then. So nine years now. Um, and we have two small, beautiful children. And I've been here for the last three and a half years. And how old are your kids? Oh, goodness. They are five and three. So never a dull moment at the Cole household? Never, not for one second. Um, what, what's your background before you ended up at Ugly Mug? What were you doing before you ended up here? Um, so I originally went to uh, Louisiana Tech to teach elementary school uh, age, and I decided I did not want to do that. And um, so I left um, right before the recession hit. Um, I left and decided that I wanted to do hair. I enjoyed just the um, creative aspect of it. And then I enjoyed the people aspect of it. And so that's why I went and moved to Houston, Texas. And I really enjoyed it. And then when I moved to Philadelphia, I was actually teaching at a hair, hair school. And I really enjoyed it. And then I worked here for five years doing that. And I just, the time that it, the the timing of your work there, you know, you're busy on Saturdays and I just made a life decision that I, um, I needed to spend that time with my family. And so I left that and kind of explored some other options, but I always enjoyed the marketing and branding aspect of what we did. And so when the position came up in here, I was like, well, the worst they can tell me is no. So why not? And uh, here I am. And how long ago was that, that you, that you came to Ugly Mug? Three and a half years ago. Three and a half years. And what was it like in the early days? Like what, what did you originally do when you first got here? Oh my goodness. Uh, it's so much has changed. Um, I know I listened to Hannah's uh, interview as well. And just looking back at um, our first Halloween picture to our Halloween picture now is it's to me, it's insane just how much we've grown. But um I feel like I just did a little bit of everything kind of when I first started, but um, I still kind of do a little bit of everything, but it's a lot more um, structured where my time is spent on any given, um, in any given department and then on any given project. Gotcha. So in those early days, um, you would work with Hannah directly. Is that, is that right? Back then it was directly with, with Hannah. Mm-hmm. And now you're working with pretty much all the departments doing bits and pieces uh, for each department. Is that right? Yes. And what, do you, what would you say a typical day looks like for you? Oh, goodness. Um, well, a typical day is waking up at probably five o'clock because that is when our daughter decides that she wants to be up and bright and early. Um, and so then from there, it's just getting my kids ready for school, me getting ready for work, dropping them off. Um, everybody laughs that I'm like, I show up at the time that they're allowed to be dropped off and I'm skirting them on two wheels and like kicking them out. I'm like, bye, I love you. Um, and then here at work, it's... Um, it really depends on what is going on. So whatever's really gonna needs my attention the most is usually when I do in the morning, just because I'm a lot more, I'm a lot more hyper-focused in the morning. Um, whereas in the afternoons, I'm a lot more, I do a lot more of uh, my task oriented things just because it's, 
it's repetitive and I know what that's going to be like, but I usually always leave some wiggle room because at Ugly Mug, there is always something that's going to pop up. And so I always try to leave a little bit of wiggle room somewhere. So if, um, you know, oh my goodness, we have to get 700 flyers printed or um, this website needs to go live tomorrow. We need to get the rest of the content up. So um, that's pretty much how my day is spent, just kind of pieces, but um, I figured it out probably in the last year or so how to work my day. Yeah, it's always a challenge, especially um, when there's so many different moving parts and clients you know, uh, need things at, at you know, sometimes very short time intervals. So it's definitely can be a challenge. Um, what would you say is your favorite part of what you get to do on a day-to-day basis here? Um, I think it speaks directly to what um, we've developed my title, I guess, into, which is um, Remarkable Experience Coordinator. I really enjoy, um, not just like somebody said, oh, you just give gifts to clients. And I was like, no, not at all. And not that we just give any gifts to anybody. We do our, our homework and stuff. But it's when a project or anything that, you know, a client was maybe looking forward to or getting that website launched, um, either getting that phone call, that email, that drop by, um, which happened a lot more often before COVID, but seeing the look on their eye and on their face of just like, just pure excitement of how excited they are or getting that phone call of like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. You know, I really appreciate it. That's honestly my favorite part of working and uh, or a team member too, you know, completing something and knowing, you know, I took weight off of their shoulders or something like that. That's my favorite. Yeah, the the element of surprise and making someone's day mm-hmm. is a big factor. When you when you look back over our time, so one of the things for people watching that may not know, um, we typically read a book as a team um, throughout the year. So the book changes throughout the year. Um, kind of when you think back of maybe some of the books, A, that we've either read together or that B, you've kind of read on your own as part of your, your role. Um, are there any books that come to mind that were kind of like the highlights or books that you feel really made an impact on what you do every day? Um, yes. Willpower doesn't work. I cannot speak more highly of that book. Um, my husband probably hated me reading that book because it made me go to Target and Sam's Club and buy a whole lot of organizing things um for our house but he has since you know it's it for one I think the biggest change in my home life was our pantry is just so hyper organized now um it's very easy if my kid says I would like a snack they they have two shelves that are basically approved snacks for them to eat and they can go in and get it themselves there's no trying to open a box or anything so that in that aspect really just it made me focused on how I can ease my home life. And then at work, it's just, you know, it's one of those uh, willpower, in willpower doesn't work. He says something along the lines of, you know, you can't rely on your willpower. It's just not going to happen. So if you're trying to lose weight, don't buy the ice cream. Because if you have the ice cream, you're going to say, oh, let me finish it so that I can, you know, then it'll be done. Um, so here it's one of those um if I know I need to be extremely focused and things like that, it is turning off. Sometimes I turn off my music and sometimes I, you know, tell people like, Hey, please do not distract me between this time and this time, or I give someone else the phone or anything like that. And I will put my phone completely out of reach or I'll take my watch off so that it's not binging on my arm. Um, So that it's just those little things that really will help you just stay focused and really just, working to your, you know, 100% capability. Yeah, no, those are all great lessons. That's, that's definitely a book that um, I need to go back and, and relook at again, because it, like you said, it not only impacts what you do at work every day, but it has tremendous potential to impact how you live your life every day. Um, are there any other books that come to mind? So that that's definitely a great one. Are there any others that maybe uh, speak more directly to like customer service, customer experience that you can think of that have made an impact? Yeah, I would say, and I I think I'm going to get the title wrong. If I was in where I normally am sitting, my books are like usually right there. Um, Or I I guess I would say these two books. One, I think I read this one 
probably within the first year that I was here. And I think it's called Raving Fans. Um, and that one was, it, it was a very interesting read because it was almost telling a story throughout the whole book. Um, and so it was basically this guy trying to figure out how to create raving fans and this uh, fairy godmother, so to speak, kind of brings them to all of these other entrepreneurial businesses and shows them these little steps that they took. Um, and so I really think that that's helped us shift, um, even though I think I'm the only one that's read it, but I think it's just helped us kind of shift a little bit of our mindset. But then the other book would be um, Giftology. I've really enjoyed that one. It's just, it, it's really opened my eyes of like, you know, how people want to receive gifts, but then how they want to just receive, you know, little things. Yeah, no, that's, those are both great books as well. I don't know if I've read either of those last two um, that you mentioned, Raving Fans or Giftology, but I, I'm, I've heard you share your experiences <laughs> reading those and how they've impacted you know, kind of what you do. Um, what would you say just as, um, you know, for a lot of people in our community that may be watching this, um, you know, downtown's a place that they come to occasionally, you know, maybe they come downtown to a museum or they come downtown, you know, for a certain event that's downtown, but they're not downtown every day like uh, we are every day. How would you explain or how would you describe your experience over the last, you know, three and a half years of actually working and being downtown every single day? Oh my goodness. Um, at first, I think when I told my husband where it was located, he was like, mm, okay. <laughs> um, just, get, you know, he's just a cautious, a cautious husband, a cautious loved one. Um, I think my mom said the same thing. She was like, you're working downtown Alexandria. And, but now that I've been here, it's, um, it, it's actually, I mean, you see some crazy stuff, but I've just seen so many uh, people that we know that have just like passed by our office that you know sometimes they just stop by or we'll jump out and say hey how's it going um I love the fact I mean obviously I love the fact that Tampa Grind is catty cornered from our office um so I can get my fix every day um I love that CLTCC has moved in just a few blocks down um because it's kind of, you know, it's just seeing all of the growth that's literally happening right in front of us. Um, I love the restaurants that are coming here. I love that sometimes we can just walk to them because that is something that living up north that we did a lot was we didn't drive a whole lot of places. There was lots of places in walking distance. And so I really feel like downtown is, is getting there. And so um, I think the other day I just walked to Century to get a grilled cheese sandwich and it was so stinking good. So I think it's just great. And I love, I mean, I love just seeing people pass by. No, I, I agree. It's a unique culture, unique experience. And I think oftentimes the uh, perception um, for those who aren't downtown on a daily basis or a regular basis, um, it can be a slightly different perception than um, the reality. Um, what, just curious, what is in your, your, your mug or your cup from temp and grind i know what it is but for those watching what's in that thing um i'm so super specific and um super uh i don't know what the word is i guess ocd about very few things but what i am ocd about is my tea um i wouldn't even let my mom hold my newborn daughter until she got my tea right <laughs> So that's how it's the same. But it is English breakfast tea um, with Splenda in it, um, four Splendas, and not cold, non-fat milk. Yeah, that, that's very specific. That's a um, that's that's more of an English, the true English sense of a tea with the um, what'd you say, the whole milk? Yeah. The not so I drink non-fat milk, but I drink it at it's cold when you put it in there, whereas if it was steamed, it would be a, uh, a London fog, I think. But so if I, I'm usually always very like, I will go in and make it. Otherwise, I know people are like, what? So yeah, I feel bad. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, so any last thoughts or any last words that you want to share with, with those watching? Um, I don't know. 
Um, it's just amazing. I think, uh, I think Hannah mentioned this, just our growth. I think back on um, my first quarterly team meeting and that it was maybe two hours long. Um, if that, like, I don't even think it was two, a full two hours. And now our quarterly team meetings are um, almost a half day thing, um, but we, we need it. You know, there's a lot of us, but we, we, we very much need it. And just the difference that uh, I mean, within the year that we've made on our goal setting, things like that, um, it's just, you got to keep trucking along. And I really, you know, I'm so glad that we, I think me and Hannah really had to go through the, the, uh, the mud and the muck to get to where we are. And we were definitely the guinea pigs, I feel like, but it just shows, you know, sometimes you got to get a little messy to get some growth growing. So um, to anybody out there, just, if you think it's messy right now, it's okay. Cause you will come out gleaming and shining at the end of it. Yeah, no, those, those are great words because, you know, one of my sayings I used to say more frequently than I have recently is uh, if the rate of change in your business is slower than the rate of change outside of your business, it won't be long before you're out of business. And um, like Jessica just said is, you know, over, over her three and a half year period here, we've changed a lot. A lot has changed and we're still changing a lot. We're experimenting a lot. Um, that's one of the things we believe in is experimenting, failing, learning from those failures and pushing forward. So Jessica, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to share with everyone that's watching.